of God. Lest any roots of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Now, when that bitterness is there, one, you might have difficulty even having children. And then every dream you have, especially the lady, every dream you have, you see the mother-in-law saying, I told you, I told you not to come into our family. I told you that we didn't accept you. You must have bewitched our son. And you forced yourself on our son. And then the mother-in-law will tell you. And sometimes they'll tell you plain, plain, it, during the day, in the afternoon, sometimes in the dream, that the road you took, in coming to our son, that same road you will take and go back to your parents and they will do everything and thereby many are affected. If you have children, then you send to the mother-in-law. The mother-in-law said, what are you happy about? Is the child going to live? I'm not coming. And you see, it's affecting you everywhere. It says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Who for one muscle of meat sold is past right. You know, the sea continues to extend. Then there's another problem the, bond, uh, the, the burning of bondage. We're looking at uh, Nehemiah chapter 13. In Nehemiah chapter 13, here are the problems. Here is the bondage. Here is what many people are contending with. It says in. Nehemiah chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 23. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod and Ammon and Moab, and their children speak half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jewish language, but according to the language of each people. Sometimes it's the unequal yoke. You were a Christian. And then you felt at 26. The time is going. At 29. Time is going. And uh, I'm not seeing any believer to get married to. And then you go to Ashdod. Or you go to Ammon. Or you go to uh, Moab. And you want to get married. And it's so easy over there. And then you get married. And you marry uh, an unbeliever. And then you come to the church. And you say, well, I know what the church is going to do. I know they'll frown. I know they will be unhappy. I know they, they're like, let you say, why did you do that? And shout at me and, you know, chastise and discipline me. After one or two years, it will be over. But I would, I would have done what I wanted to do. Ah, you are not clever. Satan is more clever. And then after that, after you have got the lady, or you have got the man, then the burden of bondage. You have brought her in. And it's difficult to push her out. And then she begins to show that she is not ordinary. And then you sleep at night, you and her, and then the sound of personality. And then you want to come near her, you get into trouble. There's fire burning in delicate parts of your body. And then you say, woman, what is this? What am I seeing? Ah, she says, actually, uh, before I, you know, married you, I had spirit husband. And I was warned I should not marry. But I said, how oh, can I not marry? And sometimes, you know, I have my children in the river. I have my children in the dream. And, I, and the spirit husband will be telling me this and that. Why didn't you tell me if I told you or not marry me, were you? Actually, how can I bear the problem alone? Since you were deeper life, I thought if I married you, you helped me solve the problem. It has become a problem now. And we will carry it together. <laughs> I want you begin to carry Carry go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You carry. It's finished. 
But thank God you are here today. You know, we'll break that power. We'll destroy that yoke in your life. The moment you meet the Lord Jesus Christ, all those evil powers, all those personalities, they are gone in Jesus' name. But you know, that's the problem. Other times, it is that you have been living your life. And then the burden of adultery comes in. Look at verse 26. Did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. That's another body. When you leave, when you, you have a wife. And then you go to another woman, and another woman, and another woman. What a burden! The burden of polygamy. Jeremiah chapter 8. In Jeremiah chapter 8, we're looking at verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 4. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thou says the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem sliding back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. That's another bondage. The bondage of backsliding. Maybe you went into business. And then you began to travel here and there. And you travel so much. And your is business tree, and the beginning it was innocent. Later, you know, because you are traveling without your wife, you began to look into this and look into that and look into other things. Eventually, you get into immorality, and you backslide. And, all, and when you go over there, Sundays, Mondays are spent outside in different places, and you miss Bible studies consistently for many, many weeks. Sunday worship consistently for many, many weeks. On Sunday, you'll just stay at the hotel watching television. You say, I'm not, uh, I'm not looking for immorality or pornography. I just want to hear the news. That's where you start. And then after that, you want to look at this and look at this. Before you know what's happening, pornography will come in. And everything you see there, you know, temptation will come to your body. And then you are not with your wife. And eventually you are, you are gone. You are backsliding. And it says perpetual backsliding. And when you come back home, you will be coming and complaining on things that are not important. And your wife is saying something has changed. Something is happening here. You are not the person you used to be. You have lost the grace of God in your life. What a great burden that is. In verse 6, I am keen on hurt. But they speak not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turns to his cause. As the horse rushes into the battle, in verse 9, the wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the watch of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them. Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. It's just talking about death here. When the man dies, the wife then will go and remarry. I'll give their wives to others. If you go about your backslide, you can catch HIV AIDS. You can catch all the diseases. And of course the hypertension, the restlessness. And then, you know, the worry and the anxiety and the guilt, the burden of guilt, that you know you are not living right, you are faithful to your wife, that alone can kill the man. And it says, if you don't repent, that burden of bondage will drag you deep into hell fire. And then it says in verse 
11 for they have healed the heart of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace maybe you go to some deceivers that you tell you it doesn't matter god is a god of grace god is a god of love whatever you do in those places just you know, say lord forgive me and then god has forgiven and how many times do you pray that kind of prayer god forgive me then you fall back into the adultery and then you come back, God forgive me, and you fall back into the immorality. God forgive me, and you fall back into the sin again. That's deception. Because you have some prophets telling you, some preachers telling you, peace, peace. When there is no peace, what they are ashamed in verse 12, when they committed abomination, nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Then you do it now with impunity. You don't care anymore. That, that, that's the burden. The burden of bondage in the family. Look at Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 is where the husband and, and, and the wife agree to backslide together. In the other passages I read to you, only the man backslides. And the wife is still standing. But there are some other cases where the husband and the wife will get into an agreement to die. An agreement to go to hell together. An agreement to disobey the words of the Lord together. An agreement to backslide together. An agreement to lie unto the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias was Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And kept back part of the prize. Also being privy to it. This wife also being privy to it. This agreement. Agreement to sin. Agreement to do evil. Agreement to be hypocritical. Agreement to backslide. Agreement to go astray. And it says in verse, uh, in verse 2. And brought a certain part and led it. At the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why? As Satan feel thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the prize. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this sin in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that had these things. The man died for his sin. And when somebody dies in sin, you know, there's no, there's no allowance of, for repentance. She he didn't have any chance to repent. And each even have any chance to send back to the wife and warn the wife. That's it, we agree to do. It's evil. And suffering for it. And dying for it. Change. There's no chance to do that. Then we're told in verse 6 and the young man arose and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And also, about the space of three hours after. When his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. They had agreed together. Are there wives that agree with their husbands? Because there is no child. All right, you can go into the maid so that I can have children through that maid. Agreement to sin. And the husbands that tell their wives, I know that the problem is with me medically. Therefore, you go out and meet with any man. Only don't tell me the name of the man, but I don't mind. Go out and meet any man and be pregnant and then come back. I'll claim the baby for myself. Agreement to sin. You see, that kind of agreement will bring judgment on both of you, except there's repentance, a return, a restoration into the grace of God. We're told that the wife came. Then Peter said unto her, How is it 
that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord. Behold the feet of them which have buried their husband at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And a young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. The same sin, the same death, the same judgment, the same punishment, the same hell. And this is the burden the people have, the burden of sin, and the burden that evil things also happen to them because of their sin. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. It will shock you, you know. There are some men that when the wife is not around, they'll bring a woman, a prostitute, a stranger, a sinner from outside. And in their bedroom, this man will commit immorality with that lady. Their bed becomes defiled. It will shock you to know. There are women, when their husbands are not around, they will entice a man, an evil man, adulterous man, immoral man from outside and take that man to their sacred room, their bed, and they commit immorality with that man. In, on their bed, on their on their bed, in the bedroom, the bed is defiled. It says, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But among us and adulterers, God will judge. You see, those are the things that bring punishment upon individuals in families. As you think about these various burdens, how can you think? Of, how can you talk about them? Number one, adultery. It's a burden, a burden of bondage that comes upon families. We need to diagnose the problem before we provide a solution. A adultery. B backsliding. When a family goes into backsliding, either as individuals or as members of a family united together, see contention, always argument in the house, conflict in the house, bitterness in the house, and they cannot talk face to face. They cannot be at peace, contention every time. D. Debt. A burden of debt on the family. That even whatever money you are, you are having, you are earning, you, are pay, you have to be paying debts. You owe this, you owe this, you owe that, because you are into the habit of borrowing. And debt becomes a burden. E, envy, envy and jealousy. You know, sometimes the wife has a good job, a good business. And then the husband, maybe he's just doing some little things. And instead of the husband rejoicing that God is blessing the family through the wife, there's envy. And the envy and the jealousy will make the man, he will not even ensure the blessing available to the family. And then have familiar spirits. You know, the wife will say, I cannot, you know, take care of the home. I cannot sweep the ground. And I know how large is your family who cannot sweep the ground. I cannot wash the clothes. How many clothes do you have in the family that you cannot wash your clothes? Why don't you buy a washing machine? If you bought a washing machine, what you are getting a maid from the village to do, the washing machine will do it better than the village girl. But you know, many times, instead of thinking through, 
Well, get this maze from the village. And then you invite familiar spirit into the family. And then everything you have, a burden of bondage that comes upon your family. And then you have G that is guile, hatred, and that is guile, deception. And you do not spend and wipe. They never tell the truth to one another. That there's God. There's deception. They smile. But the smile is a smile of deception. The keys is the keys of Judas. Of betrayal. But God is a body. And we cannot trust one another anymore. And the wife will say, Honey, are you telling me the truth this time? Or sometimes uh, the husband will say, My wife, can I depend on your word this time? It becomes a burden, girl. A church age, a church. You know, there, uh, there are families where they live on yesterday. They live on yesterday and they never stop talking about, you know, what you did yesterday. You know, how you talked to my mother yesterday. You know, how you abused my father yesterday. You know, the way you treated my junior brothers yesterday. They live on yesterday. And because of that, there is a body of hatred. Nothing bad has happened today. But the hatred is there. What brought the hatred? Nothing bad happened today. You were not offended today. Why? You're living on yesterday. And your yesterday will, will spoil your tomorrow. Get rid of yesterday. Shed it all. Throw it all. Bury it. And then look at the future. The future is more important than the past. Whatever happened in the past, what do you allow yesterday to spoil today? And then to spoil tomorrow, the regret of the past spoils the routine of the present. And therefore, that also erodes into the reward of the future. But you see, there are people that live their lives on the hatred of yesterday. I is for idolatry. The burden of idolatry. You double into this, you double into that. You are sick or you have a problem, you have a challenge. And then the people are saying, why don't you go and see Madam so-and-so? Why don't you and see Papa so-and-so? They will do this and they will do that. That's the beginning of greater problems to your life. And then J, joblessness. 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 And you know what, what I when I say joblessness, it doesn't mean that actually you are not, you are not, you know. And there are some people that are having jobs, but they are they are not able to break even, not able to break even. And then for them, what's a job? What's a job for them? J O B, just over broke. 